Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar from Open Spatial using AutoCAD Maps uh, GIS capabilities. My name is Johan Nell. I'm CTO of uh, Open Spatial, and I've been working with AutoCAD Map since 1996. Hello, hello. I'm Colin Hobson, and happy to have you on this webinar. So, thank you for joining. So, Open Spatial provide uh, geospatial engineering solutions for managing spatial data from survey, design, construction, data management, and systems integration. Now, I mentioned that I've been using AutoCAD Map since 1996. That's the time that Open Spatial started. And we developed GIS systems on top of an AutoCAD-based platform storing the data in a spatial database. So we've been using AutoCAD map functionality on top of AutoCAD for quite a number of years, and it's enabled us to do a lot of good information. So we've got offices in Australia, in California, and in South Africa. So the saying is the sun never sits on the open spatial empire. So our open spatial geospatial suite consists of three products, Mansus, which is database-driven GIS. You can edit the data on AutoCAD map or in Civil 3D, store it in a single database. It's multi-user, off-the-shelf applications and data models. Enlighten is our web-based geospatial portal and ACDC or as constructed design certification is for the validation and loading of data from as bolts directly into your GIS. So a very quick one on the Munster side is the database-driven GIS, the CordaCAD look and feel. But we've got all the menus for all the various modules. And basically, you start your way at the top of the menu and you work your way down. So you're not just drawing lines. Like you would in a freeform GIS, you would be drawing sewer or water or roads or drainage or cadastral, etc. In our data model, we build the full connectivity of all the data. So each node knows which pipe it's connected to, the property connections or service connections know which properties or parcels it is connected to. And when you capture the data, we actually build this full connectivity as you go on. And you can then go and do some fancy stuff afterwards. We've got the drop down a list where you can then go and say these are our valid list of pipes etc that you can work with that there's all the attribution etc that you would then expect from a GIS and we can then also enable all the reporting that you would need on the assets that you have on the enlightened site is the web-based geospatial portal and business intelligence integration platform so you can connect to a variety of other business applications so it's an example of what you would see with all the aerial photography open street map raster etc in the background that you can look at and then exposing all the data so this is the information that we then expose from exactly the same database now one important thing what you're seeing here is you're actually getting live data so when you're querying and working with the data you're working with live data not a copy from yesterday's that had to be processed overnight directly from exactly the same database it's not a database for visualization and one for editing it's all in the data database environment. So remember we said that we built this network connectivity. This enables us to do things like water, sewer, fiber traces that it will uh, start if I've got an issue on a specific pipe. We can go and calculate which nodes we need to go and isolate and which properties are going to be affected as part of this process. So on the water trace, they will tell you which nodes you need to go and close to isolate that. What we also do with these primary and secondary traces, so it knows that there's no water source coming from this source. So we then go and identify that these are the areas that's going to be affected. The ACDC is to automate the validation loading of data of asbolts. So basically, in terms of the asphalt process, you've got the concept, you're going through the design, then all the ASCON. It's typically done in a CAD environment. But what we do is we slightly modify that process that you can also then provide the attribution. So instead of doing it as text on the drawing, we do it as attributed blocks. 
that you can then submit to a portal and validate that information. And then you can also do workflow. So it will then notify. So you've got your developer community that is submitting to the portal to an asset owner. And in that whole process, you can then determine to notify groups within the organization if there's any action happening on the portal on a project management workflow that ends up then in your GIS environment. And you can then also incorporate that into a digital twin, which is a 3D environment for visualization and planning purposes. Right, so let's go a bit into AutoCAD map and carry on with that. So we're going to look a little bit about the history, toolbars, menus, talking about drawing versus FPO, and then a variety of different functions that you can work with. So buffer overlay, cleaning, etc. that we'll work with. So AutoCAD Map 3D was introduced in 1996, where they've introduced is basically on AutoCAD, giving you GIS type of capability. So it's AutoCAD based spatial functions. So things like projections and calculations that you can do, you can link to a database or you can embed a database inside the AutoCAD drawing. So the AutoCAD drawing is in essence a database on its own. In 2003, Autodesk introduced FDO or feature data object. So that's the other type of functionality that's been introduced. There's also some newer functionality connecting to, for example, ArcGIS Online that is in the latest versions to connect to some of the ArcGIS platforms as well. Now, Feature Data Objects was open sourced in 2005 together with one or two other products that they've done. So the Autodesk and open sourced those libraries in 2008. So the reason for this history is what you'll see in AutoCAD map that there's two styles of data and functionality. One is around working with AutoCAD based entities. The other one is working with external databases and doing things like WMS, WFS, all of those type of things, which is the FTO based functionality. So there's two styles within the environment and it's important to understand and remember that information. All right, so in terms of the user interface, if you go into the Map 3D, you'll see there's a variety of different workspaces that you can look at. So the Map Classic workspace is on working with traditional AutoCAD-based entities, so you would work with that, and then it enables a variety of different functions for you. What I'm just going to do in the year is to say, all right, now we've got a variety of different options. So what I'll do, I'll go into my options. And in AutoCAD, you've got quite a bit of flexibility in profile. So I'm going to apply a new profile in my AutoCAD. And we'll look at some of the menu changes, etc., and how you can work with that. Okay, let me get rid of the query palette for the moment. So what you'll see in here then is we've got a home, we've got a feature edit. So that is to do with the FDO side of the equation, etc. So this is then uh, the ribbon on the toolbar at the top. So what you then have here is your normal AutoCAD type functionality. Now, Autodesk originally had about 20 different products around AutoCAD. So you had AutoCAD, then you had for things like architectural and for electrical and for design. So you had a variety of different platforms. So a few years ago, what Autodesk did is they bundled all of those together. So your AutoCAD subscription gives you access to all of these other modules that you can work with. So AutoCAD Map is one of those modules that's included in your AutoCAD for tool set. So you've got your AutoCAD license, you can run AutoCAD map at any stage. One other function that's available to use raster design, I would definitely encourage you to do that. So in there, I'm not going to go into that one, but you can, for example, put in a PDF and then uh, if you've got a table, 
in a PDF, it can do a image recognition, write all the contents of that into a spreadsheet for you, etc. And there's a lot of raster functionality within raster design, which is also one of those tool sets that you can then just load within your environment. So if you've got normal AutoCAD, you can do all of the functionality. So AutoCAD map is just a superset of normal AutoCAD. There's one other, there's now basically two AutoCAD products. AutoCAD for tool sets and Civil 3D. If you're running Civil 3D, it includes all the map functionality within Civil 3D as well, so that you are aware of that. Now, if I go and look at then here, we've got our map drafting and then map data and analysis that you can work with. So if I go and look at the map drafting, so this is the original information how you would work with it. So for example, there's a query based platform where you can then go and query, reproject data, et cetera, working with it. You can also do images. So that's, for example, typical REST images that you could insert. So ECWs or with the CERT or things like that, that you can work with in that. And then some tools to do transformation and querying and then import, export and coordinate systems. So what I'll do is, I'll start off with some of the coordinate systems. And so there I'm going to assign a global coordinate system. So that is then loading the projection library for me. Okay, so there's my projection library that's loaded. Now in here, you can then go and slice and dice all of the data. So do you want to go and work with standard lat longs with arbitrary coordinate systems or you can then go and pick the country of origin or if I then go and look at if I want to work with any of my state plane systems you can go and pick your state that you're working with and then go and pick the relevant projection that you are working with so it's got all the various datums that you are working with so is it a NAT 83 or whichever datum that you're working with, is it uh, US, is it meter, survey, feet, etc. that you can work with in any of the units. Now, this is quite important to assign a projection that will tell you where you're working with. So in Mac 3D, there you can see at the bottom, it will actually tell you which projection you are in. So right, what I'll do is, if you actually then work with any of the data, let me go back here. So, okay. I've assigned the projection on there. Now, one of the things that's included, now this works with normal AutoCAD as well. Part of your subscription is to give you access to Bing Maps. So if that is under the GeoMap command. So if you go in GeoMap, it will then prompt you and to say, okay, I want to bring in, let's say roads in the background. And so that is then a street map background that you can actually then work with. Let me just go to, I'll go back to my geo map. And what I can then also do is let's turn on hybrid. And what that will do is then give you satellite imagery in the background that you can then have a look at. Now, you can also go embed this image in your drawing. So if you're working in a specific project area. If I go back to my geo map, we can see there's a geo map image. And if I could then go and say, all right, there's my uh, embed that image. And if I now turn on the geo map, we'll go back to my model space. If I then turn off my geo map and turn that off, now it's cut out a picture in that area and embedded that in your drawing and you can then use that for printing etc that you can work with so that's quite a handy thing that is included with the product you can also easily go and update that if there's then a later version available that you want to work with all right so let me go back now like anything with autocad You've got different ways of getting to different information. So let me go back to my Map Classic workspace. So one of the things that we've then spoken about is there. So we've spoken about the coordinate systems. 
Now, what we've done in this data, so this is some parcel data that I've queried. So this is actually uh, 66,000 parcels. So if I go and look at my properties, what you'll see now is I've got information. So there I've got object data. So what object data does is if I look at here, object data, is where there's actually now a table embedded within the drawing. That table has got a structure and that's then your geographic identifier and then all the various attributes that you have that you are working with that you can do that and working with object data. Now, if I go and what we then have is also your import and export. So Autodesk have embedded a subset of FME within the AutoCAD. So if I go and do an import, the command is map import. So that is then basically you've got object data as then a table on the objects layer. What you'll also then see if I go and look at this, the stars pane give you access to a lot of this functionality. So that is the command to launch that is map W space. And then we'll look at uh, some of the menus that we would work with. So yeah, if I can go and say, I can go and import a, a specific uh, shape file or what I'll just do is if I go and in there, so this, for example, if I look at my parcels, what this will then tell you is the shape file. And my current drawing is in this projection system. What it will do is it'll actually look at the .prj file in the shape file and tell you what is the projection. So if there's a different projection, it will actually do the reprojection on the fly for you. What you can also do is assign a spatial filter. So I can go and say, I want to go and define a window to say, okay, I only want to go and import the data that's on, snap to that, in that area. So you can go and define a sub filter there. And I'm going to put it on a new layer and the projection system. And you can then go and if I go and click on the dots here, say do not import attribute or create object data. Or you could actually, if you've got a database connection, you can go and specify it in there. And now in this, I create object data. I'm going to put this in a separate table that you, that we can go and work with. It can go and add a unique ID field, if you wish, that we can work with. Now, we, I can go and save this projection. I can save this as a layer profile. Now, in here, I can go and import polygons as closed polylines. Now, that is also quite an important distinction. Now, what I've got here is I've got an M polygon selected. Normal AutoCAD doesn't understand multi-polygon. So what is a multi-polygon? A poly multi-polygon is a polygon that consists of multiple parts or a polygon with holes. So if you look at, for example, you've uh, a lot in the cadastral, you may have had a subdivision and now the original parcel is no longer a single coherent instance or if I look at roads, you may have a road and there's a roundabout in the middle and you need to have that cut out, etc. Normal AutoCAD lightweight polylines cannot handle that. You can do it with folds to, to display that information, but you cannot attach attributes to that and handle that in an easy way. So what I'm going to do there is to say, okay, I've got the window and so in here, if you say, do you want to import it as closed polylines or do you want to import it as multi-polygon? So if it's a polygon with holes, it will come incorrectly. So that option will give you the information that you need. So what it is now doing, it's looking at that shape file, cutting out the area, and it's now actually doing the import for us into that drawing. Now what it's done, you can see it's going to give you a bigger area than what we had originally. And you can also see that this information now has been filled in. But I can't really see what's going on. So that is 
a multi-polygon is actually got the edge as well as a full and you can display so if i go to say there's a option for poly display and if i then go and say all right i want to do edges only and then regen the map then it will actually do that for us and now the fills are not displayed but you can go and set up how do you want that fill to be so this is now one entity with the edge and a fill so from a CAD base if you have to go and say yes my polygons and then you go and generate the fills for it and manage and it's totally different entities for printing, plotting, all of those type of things you can use in polygons instead of a combination of lines and faults that you can work with to give you all of that proper information so that we've got so there i've got them and this cadastral that's now been imported now the same type of thing that i can do is i've got this information with object data i can go and export that data that's then fairly similar that we can do there instead of import it is export so if I then go and say, okay, I want to go and export that. What is the format that you want to go and export to? So SDF is a database type file. Reshape file, tab files, microstation, DGNs, KML, GML, TGML, etc. that you can work with. So if I go and do a shape file, and then it's a fairly similar to the import that we've had now. In here, what do you want to go and export to? Is it a point, a line, or a polygon feature, or is it text? So in here, I'm going to export this to a polygon feature. You can go and say select all. So what that would do is whatever you work with. I can go and specify that on a layer. So there's our parcel import layer that we've done. So we will go and filter on a layer. And I'll go and select it manually. Now, two different fault ways that you can filter. You can go in your quick select, so where layer equals, so angle, so all of this information. So go and select where the total area is smaller than or greater than. So you can do that type of spatial filters uh, that you want to work with. Or you can just go and do a selection. So I'll just go and say, I'll actually do uh, such selection here. So the normal, I'll go and drag and drop that. So there's my selection. I'm not going to worry about the polygon topology. You can do that. In here, I can then go and say, well, what do you want to export now? In here, I can actually go and export my object properties so any of the information that you have so there i can go and say for my in polygon go and put the layer and the line weight or total area so i want to do a total area or perimeter any of that information that you want to do or you can go and say on my object data go and export the attribute information that you've got there and then coordinate conversion you can actually then go and say in here i want to go and export that to latlong 84 and it would um, work with that now remember we spoke about the closed polylines you can also go in here and say treat the closed polylines as polygons so if you've got closed polylines go and convert it on the way out to in polygons in essence is what that would do you also then have your driver options do you want to do it as a two-dimensional or three-dimensional shape files and if i then go and say okay that and it will now go and generate a, a shape file for me all right so yeah mini load map classic it will uh, display that for you assigning the projections etc now we'll go into now, so this is working with some of the CAD based type of functionality. We'll go into using some of the more FDO type functionality in a moment. All right, okay. So it's done the export. So there's 832 objects exported and it took 21 seconds to do that for us. And so now we've got that shapefile that you can pass on to others as well. 
All right. Now, what I'm going to do next, we want to work with some of the FDO type of things. So what I'm going to do is let me go to my options and I'm going to go to my profiles and to say now, if I'm in a specific system or I've got a specific menu that I'm working with, let's say in a customized menu, how do I get to my AutoCAD map functionality? We're glad you asked that. So the way that we would do that is, let me just go in here. So this is now on the Mansa side. Um, we'll be working with, let me just change a module here to, I'll go to roads, let's say for the sake of this exercise. So let me just do a quick connection there. Now this is over a VPN, so it's not lightning quick. All right, and if I now, let me just go and modify something. Okay, so now uh, I've got a specific menu that I am working with. So remember there I said you can go and load the raster, so all of that is, function is, is available. So if you've got a specific menu, if I go to menu load, and I then go and say browse, that will then take you to your support path. So that is then your username, app data, roaming, Autodesk, whichever version of AutoCAD you're using, R24.3 ENU support. And then it will tell you here you've got a different set of menus. So there you can see there's the standard AutoCAD map CUIX. So that is that the, in the online name profile that be using with all the various setups there. AutoCAD Map Civil, so that's got some Civil 3D functionality in there as well. There's a Map Electric, 3D Drawings, 3D Geospatial, etc. And there's a Map Classic and a Map Classic Civil. So I'm going to load my Map Classic, so browse that and then load that, close it. Now we've loaded the AutoCAD map menu in there and there's all of that AutoCAD map functionality available for you. So um, those two menus is now in one. So the query save back, uh, object data, etc. So all of that information is then available to you. Now, if you want to work with layers, etc., so that's where your toolbar comes in. So there's my command for that is map W space. So let me go and turn that on and see how we work with that one. So here I've got my display manager. So I can work with different groups of data. So there's my map base. So this, what you see there in the map base is all your AutoCAD based functionality that I can then go and turn on and off. If I go and look at my Map Explorer, so there you can have all your query libraries, etc., that you could work with. This whole setup, if you want to go and generate map books, we're not going to cover that. There's also a survey module where you can actually then interface with various survey instruments, also out of the scope of this one. So if I would then want to interact with data, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, okay, yep, you can also work with drawing data, import, etc., or point cloud data. But let's go and connect to data, and this will now give us access to a user interface. So it's the type of data I can load, so there's an ArcGIS connection. Now I can then connect to a file or a personal due database. Personal due data database is access, so that's not too relevant these days. File due databases, or you can connect to an ARC SDE enterprise through FDO technology, specify the server name, the instance name, the data store, which version that you are working with. The ArcGIS online connection, there's a separate connector for that. So that's the map ArcGIS connector that will then enable you to connect to ArcGIS data directly and work with that. A file due database connection that you go to that directory, MySQL, Oracle. So that is then Oracle, Postgres, shapefile. So you can connect to any of those shapefiles. So bring that in as a connector. SQLite, SQL Service Spatial, WFS, WMS, and WMTS. Now, what's the difference between a WMS and a WMTS? 
So a web map service is then querying the data as you're working with. The T that they've added is broadly the same, but that is a tiling service. So what you do is you take your GIS data and that web map service is turning it into raster pictures. WMTS is connecting to a tile set. So what you can do is then just go and what is the connector that you can go and work with data. So if you then go and say, I want to go and do a search to say, look for WMS or WMTS resources, and it will then give you some information on that if you don't know what it is. So here is then, for example, USGS imagery. And what you'll see, there's a WMS feed or a WMTS feed. So what I've done in here is just say, go and copy that address. So you'll see there at the bottom what that is and go and put that in the connector. So there's the one that I've created earlier. Now in there, what you typically have is this data is queried in as WGS84 pseudo mercator. Now that works. Now, now there's two styles. So this is the imagery only default. Now with map tile service, typically what happens is you go and create different layers. And so if you want this to be relevant to dependent on scale. So if you look at the whole planet, that is then basically one picture that you have with very low resolution. And as you zoom in, it loads it in different layers. So this one would be at the same scale turning on as the Google imagery. And that is then another one, or just the more general one that you can do. So you just go and select it and add to map. Now, if you've got multiple, you will have the option to say, go and add it into my different areas or go and combine it into one image and it, you can handle it as one image and turn it on and off different layers etc you can also go and edit a coordinate system now remember we assigned this projection to it early on and this map is now in Sierra Kato. now there's one of two ways you either need to make your data in pseudo Mercato, which is not something I'm very wild about because that, you know, that's got its own issues there as well. But if you've assigned a projection and I've got my style here, we can actually go and then reproject the data on the fly because it understands projections. And so what we've done is we go and add that to the map and let me then go. And so there's the USGS imagery that is then being streamed in from the background. So what you'll see there as you go in, it will go and refresh the data depending on the scale. All right, so there's my imagery, etc. Now, that now depends to what level they have provided that information to at what scale. So if it disappears at a smaller scale, they haven't tiled it to that level. So there's a variety of different these things. It can be imagery. It can be cadastral boundaries. It can be the NOAA satellite imagery that you're streaming in the background. It can be radar imagery that you can work with. So there's a variety of different information that you can work with. So you can actually work with the data. So what I've got is I've got WMS, WFS in there. I can then also go and say, okay, let's connect to data. And I'm going to connect to a database in the year and what I'll do is log into the database. So what it will do is prompt me for a username and I'll go and log into that. So that will now connect me to the database and then it will ask me which data store that you want to connect to. I'll then go and say, so connect to that data store. If you've got versioning enabled, you can go and connect to different versions, etc. And so what this will do is it will now talk to the data store and it will tell you these are all my layers that is available. So I'll just go and say, let's go and pick a water pipe layer. Now you can actually go and do multiple of these. 
It can reproject the data on the fly. So let me go and add that to the map. Right, so let me close that. So it's now loaded that layer for me. Let me just turn that off. You can in here then go and style how do you want to display that data. Now what you'll see in there, I've got point uh, styles and to say a water pipe is not going to be a polygon, so don't display that. It's got, there's a line style or there's a point style, so don't show the point data either. So basically only show the layer. And in there, what is then my, okay, that's the point. That's my line style. And let's go and say, how do we want to display that? Let's go and pick a color as a water pipe. I probably want to do, do it in there now. You can actually do quite advanced stylization in here. So you can go and add, for example, a, I want to go and add, let's say, um, some stylization on there, and that's how that would display. You can then also do, uh, you want to work with a stylization, you can go and build thematics on here. So you can then go and say on your pipe diameter. So they will tell you minimum and maximum values. Do you want to do equal standard deviation? Or if I say individual values, it will say, all right, this, you know, these are the, so that would be in inches, or you can, let's say if I go and do it in material. So they will tell you there's nine different type of materials that you can then go and do stylization on. You can go and pick the various style ranges. So I want to uh, have different colors. Are you working with it? Different line styles, line thicknesses, etc. that you can then go and display this data individually. You can also go and then create feature labels. So I can go and say, go and label that then with your text label. What is the text? So if I go and say, go to my expression, then go and say, load the pipe material. And you can go and, and you can then go and validate it and it will tell you where these where there's any issues with with your stylization, so you can validate it, that, etc. So go and do that. And what is the font that you want to use, etc. And so it will apply the whole stylization for you. So there I've got some water pipe information and let's go a little bit in there. And there's the style that I've built with the map that we can work with. Now, in here, if I then go and look at my table, it will now actually do a query and bring that information in. So it's fairly similar to what we've had, if you remember, when we spoke about object data. So there's all the attributes, etc., that is then queried from the spatial database. So that could be any of the spatial databases that you're working with, or for example, a shapefile, etc., that we can then work with. What we then also have is I've got a variety of different options in here. So I can set up tooltips, create joins, create a calculation, split and merge rules. So you can go and do calculation with a split and merge rules where you say, I've got a parcel layer. And what I then also have is a layer for my zoning and my fire zone. So go and overlay my zoning to my parcels and go and split the parcel layer where there's zoning differences or where there's a fire zone. So go and create one that will give me high and medium risk fire zones, parcels that's within those, and it will then go and splice and dice the data for you that way. You can also do your yeah, search to select. So that gives you a whole interface where you can then go and bold to say where the pipe diameter is greater than, and let's go and get values from a list. So it will go and query that and to say where it is greater than five, let's say, for example, go and insert that value. And what that would then do is in here, go and do the query for you and it will select 
all of those where the pipe diameter is greater than five. So the next thing that I just then want to do is if I go and look at there on my map menu, there's a GIS buffer. So in there, I can then go and say, all right, I want to go and create a buffer for us to say, let's go and I've got the one feature selected. You can do multiples. Now, what is the distance? So I want to do a five feet buffer around that on which layer do you want to go and create it? So this will automatically create a SDF file for me. And then if you've got multiple features, do you want to have individual buffers? Do you want to merge it? all buffers or only overlapping buffers so you can go and so that will give you one polygon for that etc so let me go and run that and so there it's created a five feet buffer in there and you can now go and do an overlay of this buffer to say which parcel does it intersect etc to go and do calculations with it all right so we've covered working with the AutoCAD data we've covered some of the CAD based functionality, imports, export, web map service, web tiling service, connecting to it, all the projections, and then working with attribute data, databases, etc. Now, just one thing I'm not going to go into details, but if you look at this raster image, you've got quite a bit of functionality that you can work with. So, on any of these, if I go there and edit my style, what you'll see there is if you've got raster imagery with, for example, a geoturf or something like that where you've got hill shade, you can actually go and pick hill shade or elevation. So if you've got a geoturf of elevations, you can go and pick the elevation band and it will automatically give you a background map of topography or um, yeah, giving you the height etc in there you can also go and set transparency on that so there's quite a lot of powerful features and functions that you could use within this thank you very much for your attention and appreciate you attending our webinar look out we will be doing some more webinars coming up shortly so thank you very much for your time